more money and more weapons. That's the promise to Ukraine from Western allies meeting in Copenhagen. Nearly 30 countries have pledged more than 1.5 billion euros in aid, including weapons and training for Ukrainian soldiers. Welcome. Danish Defence Minister Morten Botskov is calling the commitments a clear sign of European Thank unity. You. Thank you, um... Today, 26 countries, uh, as well as the European Union, have met here in Copenhagen and have sent a clear uh, signal. Ukraine's fight is our fight. We stand together and we stand with Ukraine. We condemn Russia's brutal attack in the strongest possible way, and we will continue to assist Ukraine in its military needs. Today's conference has been uh, about more than just words. Well, our Brussels correspondent Christine Mohundwa told me what concrete pledges have been made. So uh, part of this 1.5 uh, billion euros, uh, this is really cash. Um, the other part of it is uh, donations in terms of military stock and hardware, uh, the mandatory of value of that that's been committed at, at this uh, conference in, in Copenhagen. Uh, that's going to be uh, put into this international fund because it also includes countries like Australia, uh, for example, and Canada, who have uh, made commitments uh, to that uh, fund as well. It's, it's a three-pronged uh, effort, if you like. There is the the training of the troops, which is currently being headed up uh, in Britain, where the goal is to train at least 10,000 uh, Ukrainian soldiers by October. Indications from the press conference that we just heard uh, is that they want to increase that. There is also uh, the effort to demine Ukraine. Uh, in, the, in the past few months that the war has been raging, a lot of mines have been put in place. And now uh, there is an effort that is going to be led by Iceland, uh, where it is going to be about training trainers uh, who will eventually go back home uh, and start the process of demining the country. This is uh, an effort on land as well as uh, at sea. And then it, it is the, obviously the most pressing issue, which would be the, the, the arms. And most countries have donated and given basically all that they have, all that they can give at this stage. Uh, there is now a need to procure arms, and that is, of course, to go to the markets and to buy uh, weaponry and, of course, to ramp up and scale up production uh, in countries like uh, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, uh, as we were told in this press conference, uh, will be uh, assisting in that effort, ramping up production of certain military uh, weaponry and, and equipment that could be sent over to Ukraine. Arms and ammunition to Christine. Let's just have a listen to some of what the Ukrainian Defence Minister had to say. I am glad uh, that we all have common sense that there is no time for fatigue. That is marathon. For marathon you need energy and frankly speaking the main energy in this case is money. Our partners know that we need funding and they um, articulated readiness to support us financially. Christine, the minister talking about a marathon there. Does the international community have the stamina to keep up? Well, that is certainly what they would like for, for the world to believe. International leaders, certainly leaders here in Europe, uh, would like for, 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 for Ukraine uh, to believe that they still have the stamina uh, to continue to support Ukraine. But, but the reality is, uh, the longer that the war drags on, you can almost see the, the political will waning um, because, of course, supporting Ukraine, the continued support of Ukraine, these monetary pledges have real implications for, 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 for budgets. Uh, hence, these decisions have to be agreed upon uh, in local and domestic parliaments. Um, and that has been a real concern. And, and you're hearing that from, from the Ukrainian de defence minister because a lot of the concern from the Ukrainians is that this is sort of becoming normal for a lot of people, that people have been normalised, that uh, the war is starting to feel distant, that the media coverage is, is waning. Certainly, you don't have the same amount of media you had uh, in, in the initial days. So... What we heard today as well from, from the British Defence Minister, uh, Defence Secretary saying that perhaps President Putin in, 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 in Russia would have liked a scenario where, you know, months into this, we're effectively going on to six months of this war in Ukraine, uh, that you have the sort of uh, waning determination. But he said that this renewed pledge, this summit, uh, was, was, was to show that um, the international community was still strongly and firmly behind Ukraine. But, for example, Ben, here in Europe, we're getting into the winter. Energy prices are going up and, uh, of course, this is going to be a big problem as the cost of living and inflation goes up. Do you still have that public support and will politicians mm. have to now deal with that aspect of it as well? So 
Ukraine would like for that continued support, and certainly the leaders would like to do that. But it depends on, on the situation on the ground as, as life gets tougher in the coming months, especially here in Europe. Good point, Christine Mohudwai for us in Brussels. Thank you.